Hello and thank you for joining me. This is part two of how to create a program to control a coolant pump and a motor. And we're going to put it into RS Logics 500. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on part three. Okay, let's go over the tasks again before we start writing the logic, just so we remember what we were doing last time. So a main cutting motor for a cutting application is controlled by a momentary start and stop push buttons. A coolant pump is also controlled by the same buttons. When the start button is pressed, the coolant pump starts immediately and the cutting motor starts two seconds after. When the stop button is pressed, the main motor stops immediately and the coolant pump will remain on for another three seconds. If stop is pressed before the main motor has started, the coolant should turn off immediately. So in the previous video, we created this flow chart. So we have a step zero and on step zero, nothing really happens, but you just want to make sure you ensure that the coolant pump is equal to zero. So O colon zero slash eight is a coolant pump and the cutting motor is equal to zero at O colon zero slash nine. Nothing is going to happen until a transition. Transition is when the start button is pressed. When that happens, the coolant pump is going to be equal to one and you're going to start a two second delay timer. The next thing that's going to happen is that the two second delay timer is done. You're going to continue down to step two or if someone happens to press the normally closed wired stop button, so if they press it, so not stop PP, it will return back to step zero. So if someone, if we sit there and wait until the two second time delay is completed, we go on to step two. Step two is coolant pump equals one. And also the cutting motor can equal one as well. We go wait for our next transition. What's the next transition? The stop button is pressed. Once the stop button's pressed, we're gonna keep the coolant pump on. The cutting motor is gonna shut off immediately and we're going to start a three second delay timer for the coolant pump. So the coolant pump is going to stay on three seconds longer than the cutting motor. Once that three second delay is done, we're going to return back to step one. So that's the process. And we'll watch a little video here so you get a better idea of what exactly is going to happen again. All right, here's our little animation. The operator presses a start push button. The coolant starts right away. The motor starts two seconds after and it continues to run and it's going to keep running until the operator presses the stop push button. So wait for that operator to press the stop put push button. The motor shuts off right away when we press stop. Three seconds later, the coolant pump shuts off. Now let's try it the other way. We have the operator press the start button. The coolant starts. And now if the operator presses a stop button before the motor starts, the coolant should shut off right away. So we can see this, he presses stop and the coolant goes off. Okay, here we are in the RS Logix 500. Let's start developing the program. So the first part of the program is that I want to create a run bit that tells me that the start button's been pressed and that it will keep the functions going. So I'm going to create a little line of logic here. I'm going to grab a contact here and examine if closed. And the first part I'm going to do is make sure that the stop button's going to, not going to be pressed. So I want to keep this line of logic true until the stop button is pressed. So I'm going to enter that in now. So I colon zero slash two is my stop button and I'm going to give it a name. And we want to know that this is wired normally closed. So we're looking at a logic level one in order to keep this on. So when we don't press it, this stop button will give us a logic level of one because it is wired normally closed. And I'm going to put my start button in here. I'm going to create a seal around the start button as well because we want, don't want to have to sit there and hold our start button the whole time. And it's wired normally open. I'm going to create a seal around that right now. And I'm just going to create a memory bit using my B3. And I'm going to call this bit run. There we go. So I created this line of logic. So if the stop button is not pressed, start button is pressed, run bit will become true and it will seal on the start button so that I do not have to keep holding it down. So we know in our, in our program that once the start button is pressed, the coolant starts right away and also we're supposed to start a timer. So I'm going to add that timing logic in. I'm going to save all my outputs to drive to the bottom. So when this start bit is true, I'm going to start a timer. And you can see how I simply grab that. I go for the B and I can grab it until you can see this box here goes green and that's how I can share that 
or copy that address for that run bit. So I'm going to go for a timer right now. We went on the wrong address, which is fine. I can just bring them down until it goes green there or there. You can see that. And I always got to give my timer a name. So T4 is our timing file location. And I'm going to use zero. So that's my first timer I can have. And this here is going to be my two second delay. So before the motor can start, the coolant has to be on for two seconds. I'm going to use a time base of 0 0.001. And I'm going to put, if I use that by thousands of a second, I have to have 2,000 here to obtain my two seconds. When the run rate is true, this timer begins timing. So then the other thing we need to capture is that when we press the stop button. So we want to add that logic in here as well. So when we press the stop button, we know that the motor for the cutting is supposed to stop right away and the coolant is supposed to stay on for three seconds after the motor shuts off. So I'm going to capture that logic right now. So I'm going to put my stop button in here, but I want when I press it. So I want a logic level of zero to give me a high, so I'm going to use the examine if open. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click on the eye. I can bring the address and it copies it down for me. One other thing we have to keep in consideration is that if the motor hasn't even started, we know that the coolant has to shut off immediately. So you're not going to have any type of stop delay. So I'm going to create a little bit that I'm going to capture that information later, which is going to be um, before the coolant has started. So I'm going to just call this memory bit. I'm going to use B3 colon 0 slash we'll use 4 for instance here. So let's just keep working on our stop delay right now. I'm just going to put an OR situation in here. And at the end of this, with this logic, we're going to be capturing the stop delay. So I'm going to create another B3 colon 0. I'll just put 5 in here, for instance. We could have used the next one, which would have been 1. You can call it whatever you like. But I'm going to call this my stop delay. This here should keep sealed on the stop delay. If the stop delay, we're going to create that seal. I'm going to grab it. And I'm going to keep it on until I'm going to create another timer for my 3 sec three second delay. So so it's going to stay on until my uh, pump coolant delay off, which is another three seconds, is not true. So when it's not done, it's going to stay on. We might as well begin our timing for that three second delay. So let's put that timer in now. I'm going to put it in parallel because we know that timer is supposed to start as soon as we press the stop button, we're going to start that next timer for that delay. We're going to do a timer on, and here's our T4, T4 colon 1, sorry about that, colon 1. I'm going to go OK, and I'm going to leave this as a time base of 1, and we're going to have 3 then as our preset. So let's take a look at this logic. If the stop button's pressed, and this bit here, which we're going to give it a description right now, if this bit here, which is um, motor not started, because part of our conditions is that if the motor is not started, the coolant should stop right away if the stop button is pressed. So if we press the stop button, motor is not started, we're going to start a stop delay. That seals on around here, and it will stay sealed until this timer, which is going to begin timing, once you stop press stop and the motor hasn't been started, it's going to begin timing and this is going to stay sealed until that timer is done. So when the accumulated value reaches the three seconds. Now let's add another rung of logic in here and in this rung we're going to try to capture that um, motor has not been started yet. Let's just work on that logic. If we press the stop button and I'm going to use the logic from the timer above and if the delay to start the motor is not done, because that means that that motor should not even start it, so we're going to put that in here, T4 colon 0 slash DN, that means that the motor is not started. And we're going to seal this on, right, because we want to catch that and keep that motor not started, and then when it's done, it's going to break this seal. And we'll just move that All right, out of there. Let's describe the logic that's happening here. If we press the stop button, 
and this two second delay that delayed the starting the motor is not done, this bit will become high and it will be sealed on. If we don't press the stop button, and this timing delay does get done, this bit will not be high. So if we go back here, if we press the stop button, and it's not true, this bit's not true because we never pressed the stop button before delay was done, the stop delay will now be true, and that will delay the stopping of our coolant pump. So now, let's go down here and drive our outputs. Down here, I'm going to put the conditions in order to run our coolant pump. When should we run our coolant pump? We should run our coolant pump when the run mode is on. And when the run mode, if we go back and look at it, what it's on when you don't press stop, you press the start button, you're in run mode. But as soon as we press the stop button, it breaks the run mode bit. So we're going to have two conditions in order to turn on our coolant pump. Our coolant pump should be on when the run bit's on, and it should also be on when the second timer, T4 colon 1, is timing, because that's the delay to make sure that we have the three seconds on extra over and above than what the motor is when we press the stop button. So we're going to do that logic right now. We're going to have an OR situation for the coolant pump. So our run bit, OR, our delay. And I'm going to use the timer timing bit, T4 colon 1 slash TT. And if that's true, any of those two bits, so this path or this path, we're going to turn on our coolant pump, which is located at 0 colon 0 slash 8. And then our other output that we need to look at is our motor. And what turns it on? The only time that that motor should be on is if the run bit is true. So we're going to steal the run bit. And if that timer is done, the two second delay. So when we started th this process, we press the start button, coolant pump comes on. Two seconds later, the cutting motor comes on. So once that two seconds is done, that cutting motor should be on. T4 colon 0 slash DN. So I just want to go over this again, is that that run bit, as soon as you press stop, it will shut off power to this rung. So in that rung bit, when we press stop, it shuts it off. So that protects us for shutting off that motor. It won't allow it to be on if that run bit is false. So the cutting motor is located at O colon 0 slash 9. So now that we got this cutting motor in here, let's download this program and watch how it works. Okay, I've downloaded the program and we're in run mode. You can see here, we're green on this sidebar and this sidebar, we're in run mode. Right now you can see we have a logic level high on the stop button because it is wired normally closed. So in its normal position, it is a 1. It's 1 on this side, it's going to be 1 on this side using an examine if closed. What we're waiting for here to energize that run bit is our start push button. Once that start push button is pressed because it's wired normally open, it will then be a 1. We'll turn on the run bit. The run bit will then close this seal right here. So this is a contact with that coil it will close and create an alternate path for the logic to go through so you do not have to sit there and hold the start button. Once the one bit is true, this two second timer should begin timing. And once it's done timing, it's going to turn on our cutting motor. So right away, the coolant pump will be on as soon as the run bit's true. Two seconds later, this cutting motor will be on. So let's do that now. So your run bit's on, our timer's timing, it's done. So both the output should be on. It's good. Now if we look at the stop, the logic for our stop, you can see we're using examine if open. So right now there's a logic level one sitting at that stop button because it's wired normally closed. But since we're using examine if open, it 
inverts a 1 to a 0. So this here is waiting for the stop button to be pressed. And you can see, when we look at that rung, that the motor is started because that stop delay for that motor right here is done. So this guy is no longer high. So let's do our stop button right now. Our stop delay starts, one, two, three, and our coolant should shut off afterwards. And let's look at the logic here. If we press the run bit, you can see right now that delay to start the motor has not completed. So that tells me that the motor has not started. So if we press our run bit and we press our stop, you can see that that stop delay doesn't ever come on. Now look at, let's look at the actual outputs. Coolant pump starts right away. Two seconds later, the cutting motor comes on. I press the stop push button, motor off right away. Three seconds later, coolant pump off. If I start the coolant pump and stop before the motor starts, you can see it shuts off immediately. And that's it. That completes our tutorial using this type of method for our cutting and motor control demo. Make sure you subscribe because I'm going to show you one more way that we could write this program. It's called Step Seal. This is going on to part three, so stay tuned, subscribe so you don't miss out. Thank you.